What is up everyone? It's your motherfucking boy Boa here today. We are starting a new thing here called the Boa Cast. Okay, today we're going to be talking about video games, a lot of Call of Duty probably, mostly Call of Duty. Today, World War II, and uh, the footage from people who went out to play the beta early. Um, and after the beta, maybe we'll do another one talking about my thoughts on the beta as well. But this is going to be my new series here on the Boa Games channel. I will be talking about a lot of video games and a lot of interesting things. If you have any questions for me to answer in the next episode, you can go ahead and leave that down in the comments. And I'll make sure to do that. So, let's get right into this. So, three maps were shown. Gibraltar, uh, Point to Hawk, and Arden's Forest. Whoa. Um, so, if I had to rank these these maps on uh, what's the best, what's the worst map, I'd say the best map in my opinion. Actually, we'll go three and then two and then one. So the worst map that I've seen so far out of these three, actually, wait, take that, take that back. We're gonna do the four maps: Operation Breakout from the War Mode. We're gonna include this in here. Um, from the gameplay I've seen, I haven't played it myself. I might talk about this a little bit more after I play them. Um, from gameplay itself, I've seen, I would say my least favorite map is Ar Arden's Fortis Forest or whatever it's called. Um, it's a snow map, not my favorite. It's still not bad. Uh, from everything I've seen, I think I'll enjoy it. I just think the other ones are really awesome and are going to be even more fun than that one. Next, we have the War Mode, the Operation Breakout. Um, they said KD won't be affected. But one thing that bothers me still is when you're on the objective, you're just, it looks like you're going to die a lot. And yet, it doesn't affect your KD. But it's not fun to just sit there and die and die and die. Um, but parts of it do look fine. If you can push through, uh, I think it'll end up being a great mode. And really fun to play. Especially with friends. If you're working together and stuff. Next up we have Point Duhawk. Very close range map. Um, one of the maps that was available at E3 as well. With the other two that I just mentioned. Uh, what do you say? Very flat map. A couple of places where you can get up a little bit. Um, really just, I think it's really nice. I think the submachine guns and shotguns would do well on this map compared to the first two. Um, and the Gibraltar, the, the next one. So I think Point to Ox is going to be a fun map for SMGs running around, or shotguns. Can have a good time on that map. Next is Gibraltar, my favorite map of what I've seen so far. R really beautiful looking, and um, just so many things. I feel like you could do on that map and so many places to hold down but not really camping just like holding down an area you know like mid you can hold that down pretty well i think it's gonna be fun and people say yeah hard point is probably gonna be the best mode on that but i don't know man i think on all modes it's gonna be really fun um also tomorrow if you guys didn't know they will be oh my god dude i cannot talk they will be revealing the fourth map I don't know if it's going to be in the beta or not. They haven't said yes. Um, they said only three will be available on Friday. But this could be available on Saturday or Sunday. Or maybe even the second weekend of the beta. And it looks to be pretty small. And a fun map in general. So all the maps looking great so far. Hopefully this keeps going. And there's not any maps I don't like. Because every Call of Duty game has that map. Where I'm just not really feeling it. And usually more than one of them. Uh, let's go back to COD 4 here. I don't like maps like, not Crossfire, uh, what's the countdown, I think. I don't like that. I don't like Overgrown. Usually the bigger maps. Um, there's a couple. Trying I don't love Ambush either. Some people do, but I don't. Uh, or Downpour, or whatever it's called. I don't like that map. Or Wet Work. I don't love them. Go to World at War. Didn't play that much. MW2. Didn't play too much either. I started really playing in Black Ops 1. I didn't like Array. And there are a couple of other maps I didn't like. Can't remember them at this moment. MW3. I liked most of the maps. But none of them really stuck out to me. Uh, we got a Black Ops 2 Drone. I didn't like. Um, what's that? What's that map? It was all gray. I don't even know what it's called. Or not gray, but like light brown. It was, it was bad, right? And then Ghost. There's maps like... Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, Stonehaven. Probably, 
We all know it's the most beautiful map, right? If you're saying it's not, you're crazy. But it's so big, dude. Just so boring to play, and I don't even have a good time on it ever. And then the boost maps. That's a whole different story. We're not even going to talk about those right now. You know, so every every game has their uh, maps that aren't the greatest. Um, but so far, I think I've enjoyed every map. To the point where I think every map's either okay or going to be a really fun map. Like those last two, I think are going to be really fun. Gibraltar and Point du Hoc. They're looking real, real cute, if you ask me, okay? Looking real cute. So let's talk about the weapons here. People were saying that the balance already is pretty good, which is a good start. People are saying the PPSH and the Type 100, I've heard, are the best guns in the game. I've also heard someone say the SCG-44 um, SCG or whatever. I don't think that one was correct, but, you know, PPSH is pretty much the most common agreed-upon gun that was the best so far. Um... I still think the MP40, which isn't in the beta, looks pretty good too. As well as the bar, which isn't in the beta, at least on the first day. Looking pretty solid weapons. I think the balance going to be alright. Snipers, pretty cute. I think it's kind of weird that they have three shotguns already, so I hope there's going to be some new shotguns. I mean, I don't love shotguns, but like, they've already brought out three. That's crazy, if you ask me. Three shotguns. What can you do, right? I think there are three in most categories, except for pistol and sniper. And launchers, of course, but you can't pick launchers, if you did not know. Um, it actually is like a basic training, so you can have a launcher on your class instead of a pistol. It is now pick 10. Um, which people, I've, I've seen a lot of people, I've been on Reddit lately, like, oh, pick 10's gone. We're just taking a step back, but I really don't think we are. For one, I think it's easier to balance the game in, in a whole because then you can just fit, focus on like one part of the class system at a time like is this gun overpowered all right now is this attachment overpowered then you go on the lethals or tacticals and you can fix those, that one category at a time and it's not uh, so many physical possibilities that you can't ever balance it right you, you understand what i'm saying it's i think it's going to be okay and actually i really do enjoy it um i think pick 10 was cool back in black ops 2 i think that was the best version of pick 10 we'll ever see uh but now with this five attachment stuff it was getting a little bit crazy i think we all have to admit i was starting to think why would i ever take a perk when i could take an attachment because the attachment's on my gun and i like the gun i'm using right i felt like the attachments had a lot more weight when you have stuff like zoom in faster that's going to help you a lot in the gunfight stop going to help you a lot in the gunfight Advanced rifling or whatever, long barrel, helping you in the gunfight. All these things are helping you in the gunfight. Perks barely helping you in a gunfight. You, you had to take the perks. Or you had to take the attachments. So, I, I, I didn't love the uh, pick 10 system. I feel like with this, there's going to be a lot more variation in classes. Um, what are people going to take is... I don't know, stock's not actually, I don't think, in this game. At least it wasn't shown, and no one's been using it if it was. But I'm pretty sure someone said that stock was not in the game at the point. Could be later, but we don't know. I'm pretty sure it is a basic training from what I've heard at E3. Um, that's okay. I feel like that's still going to be used, and basically going to be like having all those task points. But it's whatever, right? It's whatever. Next thing I wanted to talk about is the game modes available during the first day of the beta. All subject to change, just like the rest of the stuff we talked about so far. So the three things that could be coming in are, are that are in are Team Deathmatch, Domination, and Hardpoint. Team Deathmatch pretty much has to be, <laughs> like has to be in there, right? Because Team Deathmatch is pretty much a classic and so is Domination. Um, I think Hardpoint's also becoming like a favorite. Especially in a competitive scene and it's just nice to have it for people who are competitive to be able to play that mode and get a feel of it uh, especially without the esports stuff being in there which is totally reasonable and it'd be kind of weird if it wasn't there so it's, it's really nice that they put in hardpoint they didn't have to and they did they could have put a mode like free-for-all but i i take hardpoint over it all day 
Uh, sorry for those who play free for all. I feel like that's the one that is. If it, another one comes in, that could be it. But I feel like that's still kind of boring, you know. Like we could have a well, like CTF. That'd be great. Which they've shown. They've shown new CTF, which is going to be an esports. I'm pretty sure. So for your Black Ops Three, CTF Masters. CTF is coming back. Or if you played in Black Ops Two, Black Ops Three, Advanced Warfare, I think those games all had it. Um, that should be coming back to esports this year. So, is there any other modes I'd like to see coming? Not really. I don't really need any of the other modes for the beta. At this point, I know what game modes are like. I'm just really looking at the maps and the, uh, the guns for this one. I mean, you could say I want to try out different maps on different modes, but we have a good variety here. We have a straight up killing, um, domination, which is like capture the flag and hold down an area to get a bunch of kills and hard point was just like hold down an area yeah you have to get kills but i feel like it leans to the most objective out of any of the modes and there's a good balance you know if you're no objective at all heavy objective and the medium one it's pretty good I, I really enjoy what they're doing i think they put a lot of thought into it so good job to you sledgehammer i'm, I'm proud so obviously the beta if you didn't know either Last for um, Friday through Sunday, August 25th through 27th, for PlayStation 4 users only. That's pretty common knowledge at this point. Um, there will also be a second weekend, I think September 1st or something, through the 4th, around there. Whatever the Friday through Sunday is, the week after the first beta. Um, this will give six days for all PlayStation users and three days for Xbox users. To test out the beta here and give feedback so if you want to you can give feedback uh, on reddit you can add a sledgehammer on twitter try and give your feedback i think i'm going to be making a video where i really just go in depth on everything i played with uh, whether i thought something was wrong or whether i thought they did something good and that they should keep this in their mind and don't change it uh, some problems I, I want to go over now in this next part here. What I've, I've heard people say is good in the game and what I've heard people say is bad. Because I've heard some people who are just saying good stuff. Some people are just being negative. And I want to kind of bring those two together in this. So, some things I heard are really, really good about the game is the pace of it, which is huge right goes too slow people didn't like the public matches um if it was too fast and chaotic and no organization i think that's like most of the boost games right you can get away with pushing everything there's no strategy involved uh, so i feel like this game has a great mix like a black ops 2 style pace and it looks really fun to play it looks really fun to watch and i kind of am excited for competitive going into this year Another good thing I've heard is once again the balance in this game. Uh, the game hasn't even come out yet. People are saying the game is pretty dang balanced. Um, even the shotguns. I've seen some shots from shotguns that didn't kill at ranges like the Remington from Black Ops 2. Wait. And I am thankful for that because I love Black Ops 2, but the Remington, come on. Gun was, gun was annoying, man. Every time I died, I was, I was raging throw my controller. <laughs> So, I'm happy that shotguns aren't too good, at least from what I've seen and what people have been saying. So, it's really nice. And snipers, the semi-auto one looks kind of dumb. Not going to lie, I never really like semi-auto snipers unless they're like a Barrett. But this is one of the weaker ones and I'd rather something like the Barrett not be in the game if it can shoot that fast anyways. So, this one's just going to be like your SVU, your whatever. Just those, that headshot only sniper rifle that you can use. And the other one looks really solid. Um, not the Springfield. Springfield's not in here, by the way, which was at E3. So the Springfield will not be available on the first day of the beta for sure. So another thing that I heard was really good is 
just how willing Sledgehammer was to take in criticism. I know it's not like about the game, but I feel like this could be important going later on to the year. Apparently Sledgehammer was very open, wanting to know responses from the people who they sent out there, which they paid to come out there. Really nice Sledgehammer to do that. I know I got no subs, but Sledgehammer hit me up. Um, one, one negative I saw right now is that there's only six score streaks. Now, I know there's a lot more in the actual game, but I thought I'd be able to use them because I feel like score streaks could be one thing that could help out a lot with. Whether it be balancing the score or about like trying to get them to work better. And the Molotov, it's a weird streak, but it does seem balanced. Right? You're not throwing a Molotov getting quads. Because it's like 300 score. Now, do I think 300 score should be the final? No. I think 350 would be a better score for it. No, it's kind of weird. It's only 50 more, but that could be the fourth kill to make it to 400 instead. And I think that's more reasonable. At least in my opinion. But you guys can feel however you want to. But I want to now talk about more negative sides of the game here. Or at least what people said. And one thing is the kill feed is very short and fast, which is completely reasonable and I see where they're coming from, but to me it don't matter. I'm not no feeder, quick scoper, 360 phase member, you know. Uh, I just like try really hard. But if I do get a quad, it's kind of cool. It is fun, so I get it. Uh, you should make that longer, and apparently they're already open to changing that, so really nice. Uh, next thing I heard was the colors. Some people liked this, some people didn't. Colors of the kill feed were a little bit different uh, but in my personal opinion I kind of kind of like them and I do like the colors of the maps yes it's not like world at war the colors of the maps aren't that dark but colors of the maps are a huge part of the game and at least from what I've seen a lot of people weren't the biggest fans of world at war when it first came out and another dark game is Call of Duty Ghost in my opinion and did Call of Duty Ghost have a good reception no so having those bright colorful maps, yeah, it doesn't really follow that World War II theme that people want. Um, but it makes the maps look nice and actually enjoyable to play on instead of some dark corner where you're getting shot at from a guy with his SMG. He's just sitting in a corner and you walk by him. You know, it's not, it's not fun like that. You want to be able to see your opponents, have a fair game. And I feel like with these bright colored maps, it's keeping Sledgehammer style as well as being able to really have a fun multiplayer experience so overall so far i've heard mostly good thoughts about the game no balance problems at all once again nothing too bad lmgs look dope all the guns look really sick some iconic weapons from the world war ii time and uh the maps having what well, seems to be all of the maps having like some historical reference and hopefully they keep that through the DLC and all the maps in the original game, it'd be great. Um, and yeah, I, I really enjoy what I've seen so far, and I really cannot wait to play until Friday, dude. I wish I could be playing right now instead of making this podcast, but I'm not. And it, it sucks, but yeah. So one last thing I did want to talk about today is the negative things associated with supply drops in the game right now is people are saying, okay, it's just not going to be DLC after the launch. Wait, wait, wait. Or, you know, it's not... Sorry, 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 sorry. It's not going to be just cosmetic only after the launch. Because during the launch, they already, like, pretty much said it, like, a million times that it's going to be uh, cosmetic only. But hear me out, okay? Here's what we do wrong all the time. I'm not saying buying supply drops is bad. I'm not saying buying supply drops is good. I've bought supply drops before because I think... If I have money, I spend it on on what I want, right? And I wanted new guns in Black Ops 3. I wanted some stuff in... uh, What game did I buy them in? I think it was AW. I bought some in maybe MWR too. I never bought any in IW because I felt like the earn rate was pretty fast. So I just earned them. But other games, it seemed a little bit slower, so I wasn't able to. Um, So let's talk about this, right? When you're opening up a Black Ops 3 supply drop, at least most people, and they get a new gun, it's one of the better things that you can get out of supply drops, right? It's what you want. Getting these camos, yes, it's nice, but you're not going to be like, 
oh my god, I just got this new camo, look how dope. You know, when you get a new weapon, it's actually something people find reasonable. And I feel like that's why it could be a good option. Um, when you have cosm cosmetic only, whatever. It's, it's, it's not going to be as good. It's just, the excitement's not there, right? But at least there's no stat-changing weapon. Or whatever. Um, one thing, though, is when you have those weapons in the supply drops, like Black Ops 3 does, you got to make sure they're not better than the other guns, man. Because if they are, people are going to bitch. And they're going to bitch a lot. Man. I've also seen the people who talk about uh, they the fact that you can play as a black female soldier. Who gives a fuck? If you're trying to play Call of Duty, yeah, they said they're going to stick that time fucking period specific right well who cares dude let people play as who they want uh when you're making a game you gotta decide between things and they decided that and that's fine with me dude props to them they, they did that and i'm fine with it if you if you really have that big of a problem with someone playing as black female soldier you're just wasting your time then don't play right like i don't know what to tell you I think it's a fine implication in the game, and I think it's not going to hurt the game, and it can help the people who are, who do look like whatever, right? If you're a girl, playing as a girl is probably more fun. Um, if you're black, you might want to play as a black person, right? I might want to play as a black person. I wish I was black. What the fuck? <laughs> so, it's really fine. People need to stop bitching. I swear to God. People saying it looks like Battlefield 1 or he's fucking stupid. Like, just just try it, guys. If you if you really don't know, if you're not sure if you're bitching about it, you don't think it's good, try it. If you don't like it, cancel your pre-order. Don't play it. That has been all for the first episode of this podcast. I hope you all boys enjoyed. Are we trying to do this series weekly? Love you guys. Peace.